Good day and welcome. The law has spoken, and so nine candidates will be vying for the presidential election on October 7 this year in the country. And there was much more than just that, the crisis in the Northwest and Southwest. But we'll decide, uh, we've decided this week to talk on what the Constitutional Council did and also to see the possibility of having a single candidate within the opposition party to face the incumbent next uh, October the 7th. Those are the two key issues we've picked from the press. But let's see what the press was writing on this week. I'll introduce our guests when we come. The October 7 presidential election in Cameroon took the press by storm this week, with stories of which political parties doing what, where and how appearing on different columns of the newspapers. Cameroon Tribune headlines 2018 presidential security assured. The story on its Tuesday edition makes reference to the security evaluation meeting in Yaoundé, wherein strategies to secure the national territory before, during and after elections were laid down by the interest of the lone English daily, the Guardian Post, is on the Grand North that has signed a secret pact with SDF to oust Bia. The paper says that prominent centre, South, East and Littoral elites are also in strong alliance with the SDF presidential candidate. This at a time the Post newspaper is announcing SDF to lead opposition coalition of over 10 parties. It quotes Joshua Osi as saying that the party's coalition doors are still open. Then Cameroon Tribune crowns it all with a report on the examination of pre-election petitions from 12 candidates tabled at the Constitutional Council. But the political leadership tussle in FACO division doesn't escape the ready eyes of the Guardian Post, which reports that Ekema says Nalova and not Musongi is political leader. The socio-political upheaval in the northwest and southwest regions is taking new twists daily with killings reported here and there. The Sun headlines, hospitals under attack. The paper says a husband and wife, both nurses, were shot dead in COP in Bengui, northwest region. But the Guardian Post reports on the killing of former Southwest Chiefs Conference President by gunmen. This at a time the Post is questioning who killed former Pamol Chair Chief Eso Ito. Cameroon Tribune brings to the fore the indignation of traditional rulers over the killing of the custodians of customs and traditions in the northwest and southwest regions. The interest of the Horizon newspaper is on the stance of the UN representative whom the paper reports as saying Anglophone crisis is an internal matter while also reporting that SDF was forced to divert humanitarian aid destined for refugees in Nigeria to internally displaced persons in the northwest and southwest regions. The Guardian Post reports that lawyers have filed motion for immediate release of Siseku, Ayok, Tabe and Co. The Green Reporter takes its readers to recent moves to keep Cameroon plastic free with the headline Cameroon Innovator Cleans Environment by Turning Plastics into Boats. At a time, Eco Outlook is announcing government sanctions over 390 companies involved in the distribution of non-biodegradable plastics. And as the horizon gives 10 reasons why schools must resume effectively all over northwest and southwest, the lone bilingual daily Cameroon Tribune presents a list of 177 schools prohibited from opening their doors due to non-possession of legal documents to function for this academic year. We end a press review on this story reported by the Guardian Post on the sanctions of a policeman who has been demoted from a higher rank to a lower grade for driving a taxi in uniform. The court case has been adjourned for September 11. Until we meet again, this is your hour with the press. Thank you, Emanuela, and I would like to begin with the expert in law, 
Um, the court did uh, rule uh, last Friday on the uh, series of petitions which were filed in by opposition parties complaining that the files had been thrown out by the elections uh, governing body in the country. And uh, the big question which many people are asking, can the law not be sympathetic? Can the courts not be sympathetic, especially with the, uh, some of those complaints that, were, uh, that attracted a lot of pity when the complainants did uh, file and went, uh, did uh, speak at the Constitutional Council. Thank you, Joe, for asking me this question. Uh, I want to th say that uh, the court operates based on the laws uh, of the Republic. The Constitutional Council has laws uh, that uh, governs it and a procedure before the Constitutional Council uh, uh, is based on uh, laws that, that we have. And so, if, if we start thinking about uh, sympathy, yes, it's, it's possible that the, 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 the court or a constitutional council can get into some mitigation, some circumstances that might permit them to rule against a decision of uh, the, the, the electoral board or a lower court in the case of uh, traditional courts. But that has to do with um, an exceptional circumstance. I just want to take an example. If uh, a candidate whose candidacy was uh, uh, rejected takes a petition before the, the, the constitutional council on the ground that he was arriving to deposit his candidacy and met with a serious incident on the road, and that incident caused him not to, arrive, not to arrive on time, and he has justification, maybe an accident, you know, he has justification. The court might want to take into consideration that aspect. That is a mitigation. But in a case where a candidate stays and comes late with a certificate of nationality, late when he had all the ample time, when the elections were announced, and he comes late with such a document, honestly, uh, the, 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 council, the council or the court will be setting a very bad precedence for if, if, if we, it has to be such uh, sympathetic. Okay. Uh, you've just made mention about something there, which uh, an accident which prohibits or which uh, pushes a candidate to come late or not to file in the, the, uh, the documents on time. But take this example. The law says, for example, that um, a LACAM is supposed to stay up until midnight, right? Yes. If the law permits a LACAM to close extraordinary on that day, of the, on the last day, why should the law not permit the Treasury, for example, to stay awake till midnight? on that same day because everybody is supposed to gear towards that midnight point. Uh, you, uh, you, Joe, you must understand that you need to go to the treasury to get your document to take to a LECA. Exactly. And so you need the time to leave the treasury to get to a LECA. First thing. Second thing, we are dealing with money and the treasury deals with money. So there need to be some security. We need to have some security. However, what you are saying is a proposal for amendment, which uh, uh, I, I cannot stand against. If uh, it is debated upon and lawmakers think that the, the period or the time to should be extended for the Treasury that receives the money, it's okay. But I think that it, it, will, it will be very difficult to, to succeed in, in such a plea because the, the time to take the money, I mean to take the certificate from there and get to, to the, the electoral board or to, to, the, to the directorate of LA County to deposit the document might not, uh, might not be convenient or might not be good as compared to the, 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 the directorate of LA election that take. has to stay on and receive the documents. Presumption is that the documents are available and so there might be obstacles and all of that 
there might be crowd uh, a crowd before the, the 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 board that needs to receive the document and so they should give this allowance this time to uh, for, for it to be able to receive these documents okay maybe uh, Elias would want and, to and in that case yes. that it will be equally the same case if you're asking the courts to, to stay open to establish a certificate of nationality and other documents Thomas everybody is supposed to gear up towards that if, if that were the case indeed yeah I, I think the, uh, an innovation there to go in line with what he was trying to say the, the, the board can also to institute online uh, uh, direct bank payment so that uh, a candidate does not necessarily uh, need to move to the treasury. He just pays online and uh, the, the, the problem of uh, time and those constraints can, uh, can be solved. Okay. Uh, Ebenezer, you followed the deliberations. Uh, so how, what was the mood like? And first of all, react to what they have said and then the mood over there. Yes, so the issue I raised in concerns the candidate Olivier Billet who said he went to the Treasury at 11 p.m. to pay the 30 million francs and found that the Treasury was uh, closed. He brought in a belief uh, to establish a report that he went there at 11 p.m. to pay the 30 million francs, but the Treasury was uh, closed. And uh, uh, what the Council decided was that uh, the law does not provide that the Treasury should stay open till midnight to uh, receive uh, money. But he raised another argument. He said the ELECAM at one moment signed a secular asking, uh, saying that the Treasury uh, could receive the money up to uh, such a uh, very late hour. But that argument was equally thrown out because that's not a law. Uh, that's simply a wish that was expressed uh, by Lekam. As uh, the barrister did see, it's extremely uh, dangerous to think that the Treasury should remain open till midnight uh, to, to receive um, uh, money. But I also want to add that I covered the, 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 the session and uh, I came up with the impression that most of the petitions, in fact, they, they, they were just joking. They were not serious. Uh, honestly speaking, they were not serious. The, uh, I started asking myself, are these the type of people who want to be president of this country? It, it, no, it, it, some of the petitions were too ridiculous. Yes, they were just too ridiculous for people who want to be president. Uh, I, 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 in fact, some of them filed petitions which look like those filed by people insane, mentally insane. They, 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 <laughs> they were, they, 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 I was, I was shocked okay. that okay. the office of the president uh, should be reduced to this level. That people, no, it was really disappointing. <laughs> uh, no, um, um, it's not uh, you who listens, who determines who is uh, mentally upright. Mm. To it is the courts the court. that mm -hmm. determine, and the people of Cameroon yes. uh, that choose their leader. So uh, it's on that basis that they select whoever wants to be their president. But that notwithstanding, um, when you look at uh, the deliberations at the level of the Constitutional Council, would you say that that court has come to make up for what was lacking in the process, uh, electoral process in Cameroon? Uh, yes, Joe. The, I, I, I've, I've not had um, personally, I haven't uh, uh, thought I should... Uh, downplay or to undermine the role that the, the Supreme Court paid, uh, played uh, in, in lieu of the Constitutional Council because the Supreme Court did exactly a good job just like the Constitutional Council is doing. But that was a constitutional provision which uh, was respected. I think they're just in line with what the Supreme Court, Court was doing. Now, Joe, coming back to what um, uh, Ebenezer said, uh, you, you see, what, what we are seeing, for example, with, with, with the petitions, gives us the impression that uh, the politics or the, the aspiration to become a president is more of a showmanship than uh, a, a serious business. Because how do you come to start telling people about coming late to pay money? coming to tell people that dismiss this person because of this name. Take me because I am, I am this person. No, if you, the law has its conditions. Which conditions the candidates need to know prior to the convening of the electorate. And so if you, you can't, you, you, it's, it would be better for a candidate to say that, you know, I fulfill these conditions, but I don't know why I was not considered. That gives us the impression that this candidate is serious. 
you know. So I think that we, we have to be a, a little bit serious in, 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 in this country with regard to uh, the, the aspiration to become uh, a president. Of Just the amount. 30 million, is that not good enough for, no, for, for, for people to... Good. Uh, it's good enough. But some of them did not even pay the 30 million we are talking about. And then the second thing is that, Joe, we have 58 divisions in this country, if I'm not making a mistake. And if you want to do a genuine campaign, you need at least 5 million francs a division. And so if you put that 5 million times 58 divisions, it means you are talking about a billion. And so if you have a billion francs waiting in your account, they did announce the election, all your documents will be ready in two days' time. In other words, if you are not rich, you can't be a president in Cameroon. Not necessarily being rich. I mean, if you aspire to be a president, you, be, you should be somebody who is at least ec economically strong. I mean, your the, 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 the party should be that, that, that party that could raise. And I like the way the, the bar was raised this time around. In 2011, remember, it was, it, was, it was 5 million, and we had 23 candidates. This time around, the bar was raised to 30. 30 it used to be free some time ago. Of course. And you see that it has, be, 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 it has pushed out all uh, the Good what I would call psycho fans who are coming to play to the gallery. So you see, with the nine candidates, Cameroonians have been appreciating because you can rightly see that these are serious people. It is not only Lekam who is judging. Even the population who, who, that has to vote also has to stay. Okay. Uh, Ebenezer? Yes. Um, I, I think the issue of the 30 million, one of the candidates, or one of the petitioners uh, whose file was rejected, even submitted that the amount should be raised to 100 million francs, so as to make it more selective. Yes, <laughs> 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 uh, yeah, so as to make it more uh, selective. I think uh, um, it is good the amount was raised to 30 million francs, but we, uh, we saw how it succeeded to... Uh, uh, a hold back uh, those uh, Would you call it sifter? Yeah, yeah, to sifter those who went in as uh, as adventurers and even though they didn't pay the 30 million francs they were still there submitting that their files should be retained that is what really beat my imagination somebody's file shows clearly that you have not paid 30 million francs you have not submitted the, the, the 300 signatures from the 10 regions of the country but you are still submitting that your file should be retained I, I was completely lost okay <laughs> okay prince has just come in maybe a word before we move out of that side. Object. Well, uh, when I follow uh, what uh, uh, fellow panelists are discussing with regards to uh, those who put up uh, the uh, candidacy, uh, I think that the, the, the main bone of contention should not be focused on uh, 30 million or finances or your financial capability. There are a lot of people who have a lot of money around, you know, in this country who have stolen government money and uh, they are stuck in their homes, but who don't have the aspirations of Cameroonians. We must understand that politics is uh, the art of management. And when you understand the needs of the people, you can, from that point of view, raise up money from those people who want you to become their leader. So it is not necessary that you must stock money in your bank account. You must become extremely rich. You must must you have, still to be rich. Uh, yeah, mm -hmm. that's, that, that's the point, you know, because there are many of our, our compatriots who are rich today, they have been rich out of government coffers. But you know, must you so still to be rich? But there are others who are genuinely rich. There are others who are genuinely rich. But the point is that the way I heard some of them saying uh, you must be rich, and uh, we understand the context of which we are living in our country, people steal government money to become rich in this country. Yeah, Most of the people who are rich are, are people who, who, have, who, have, who, who are not in business, but they are, they are stinkly rich, you know, who are working with the, with the state, but they are, they are extremely rich. It is, it, is, it is contrary to the norms of how riches can, should be generated normally in society, you see. So those okay. are the things that I want us to understand that to become a leader, you must be able to have the aspirations of the people. You must uh, have the vision that the people are uh, 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 buy so much, and then from there you push your vision forward, and that is what we are doing in our in our team. You know, to be able to make sure that Cameroonians actually buy the vision. I see, that I, I see where you are coming from. <laughs> no, I want to say that yes. if, if uh, the, the people buy your aspirations, they will give you the money. They will raise the money for you. It means you have you need the time, the ample time to present the program to them. They support you, and when that time comes, the money will come. So I have the impression that. Most of these guys, you know, the candidates are venturers who just wait when that time comes to start jumping left and right to look for money. How are we sure that they really meet the aspirations of the people? 
Yes. It's by but raising a, the money. A, a credible political and party will not lack 30 million because the party militants will raise that money for, for their president. Okay, that, that sounds like uh, Cabral Libby. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 I'll, I'll like us to move out of this and talk real politics now, the politicking in, in, in the corridors. And let's uh, phase out with this report by Beneza Kanga on what happened at the Constitutional Council. Quinta. Quinta. Or Quinta or uh, Rita Edan, rather. The independent candidate Abubakar Kamaldin set the ball rolling with his petition requesting the validation of his candidature. His case was quickly dismissed as a reporting counselor, Ba Umaru Sanda, explained that he failed to deposit his file at Ilekam. Next in line were the two petitions filed in by Kum Ane Ihims of the bilingual Yaoundé political party, BIA, which had as rapporteur Paul Chunjinkui. His request for the disqualification of the CPDM candidate Paul Bia for changing his order of names in different documents was considered baseless as he had no proofs. We are very satisfied by the decision of constitutional council. Vincent Sosten Fudai Somba, whose petition was examined by Amadou Tijani, was thrown out for failure to disprove the accusation by Lekam. Olivier Mbile's plea for the council to authorize him to pay the deposit did not yield fruits. I'm still uh, working on the political scene and finally the intervention I'm also calling for is that of God. Jomo Leopold Steve, who came up with two petitions one for his candidature to be re-examined and the second requesting the disqualification of Paul Bia's candidature did not find favor before the council. And Gono Valentine took off time to explain why he should join the race but simply saw his case thrown out. The self-declared messiah, Ze Ambevele Genevieve, on her part declared that the failure to validate her candidature is a failure to save Cameroon from sin. In the absence of Berten Kisop of the Social Justice Party, a detainee in the Yaoundé Central Prison, two of his petitions were examined with the conclusion that they lacked merit with the rulings of the Constitutional Council, which are final. The presidential poll of October 7, 2018, will feature nine candidates. <laughs> I would like to begin with you, Prince uh, Ekoso, on the uh, main subject, or, or the possibility of an opposition coalition. Um, given the laws in place, will it not be proper for the opposition to come together uh, in a coalition to be able to face the incumbent on October the 7th? Yes, Joe, uh, those are the uh, procedures and those are the cries of Cameroonians, uh, both at home and abroad, that... Uh, uh, the opposition or those who are running for those who have been retained. The Why not say the some Cameroonians? No, no, of all Cameroonians. No. I want to, I want to, say, I want to, say. Joe, you've asked me a question, so allow me to okay. to answer you, then probably you can ask another question. Uh, you know, the, the desire for Cameroonians to really want change in this country is, 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 is higher than that of 1992. That's what you must understand. And these Cameroonians are found everywhere in the world especially those who are living in this country because of the economic experience and because of the terrible things that are happening right now we have seen and Cameroonians have testified that uh, the current regime has not been able to deliver the goods and so they want something else I want to believe that even those of us sitting here we want something else with regards to the current situation and from that standpoint, we want to understand that there is great need for a coalition among all those who are running for the office of president right now. I mean, those who are of the opposition. And uh, there are a lot of things that have been going on. And I want to say here vehemently that um, uh, one of the candidates that um, my party has endorsed um, in the person of Batonye Akeremuna is one of those people who began yeah, who began to do a campaign yes, i'm it. just trying to explain he, he began by uh creating a platform for opposition parties to come together and to decide who will become the single candidate for the office of president among the opposition 
That is what he began by doing. Okay, can I ask you um, another question? Okay, please. The, the way you speak is like you're speaking for everybody. Hmm? I have, meanwhile, you have, I have your, own, your own lenses. I have public opinion. Uh, you have public opinion? Yes. And I'm speaking from... Uh, I am a political leader, and I hear from the people. I don't come on the studio and say what I think. I always gather information. If I open my phone here, you will see comments and proposals and things that people were asking me to say here okay. today. That, so I'm not saying... That I'm, sounds I, interesting. Uh, yeah, yes. Okay. Would you say some people were asking you to say, or you say every Cameroonian was asking you to say... Joe, if you take a random sampling of the population of those who really want change in this, com in this country, you will agree with me that more than 90% of the population of this country want change. Okay. Well, when, you say, when you say what you say, yes. how would you justify the fact that the CPDM, which is the governing party mm -hmm. who, that has presented the incumbent, yes. will still vote massively for their own candidate? And uh, they have, uh, they are located in every uh, uh, part of the country, more than your party, more than the coalition in which you are. No, it, the, if CPDM is found in every of the 58 divisions, as my brother said over there, those 58 divisions, those who are living there are Cameroonians, born and bred Cameroonians, and even the diaspora. And I am saying that from every justifications, those Cameroonians, whether they are putting on CBDM um, uh, uh, um, material or not, they aspire for change. It's not because some people don't have the opportunity to come and talk like we are talking here. It means that they don't have something to say with regards to what is happening, with regards to what is happening. And what is happening has testified to Cameroonians both at home and abroad that the regime cannot deliver the change or they cannot deliver the aspirations of the people. And so some of them are sitting in their corners in those 58 divisions wanting that the opposition should be able to come together and wanting choose. that you talk for them. Of course, that is, what, that is what I'm saying. And that is why we believe that the, uh, the, 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 the primary uh, uh, step which uh, Akaremuna took was 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 applaudable and that's why some po political parties came on that platform and that's why we are we keep talking to other political leaders and discussions are still going on for the need for us to be able to decide who actually becomes the uh running uh, um uh, uh candidate for, okay. the, for the opposition okay and, i'll, I'll and, come uh, back to you shortly okay mm -hmm. uh, when when he speaks and you see what is happening on the ground you ask yourself what's wrong with these same leaders whom he thinks is part of, that they cannot agree. Akere is just one of them. Mm. I will answer your question directly without beating around the bush. To talk of a single opposition candidate in the October 7 presidential election, to me, it's impossible. It will not happen. Uh, if you want to talk of a single opposition candidate, don't count on Gaga Manaji. He will not be part of it. Don't count on Adamu Namjoa. He will not be part of it. Don't count on Joshua Usi. Because the SDF believes that it is the leading opposition party. And so if there has to be a single candidate, it should be other parties that should come towards them. So I don't see the SDF uh, going towards other parties, uh, asking its candidate to stay back and support. A, another. So a single opposition candidate to me is impossible. Why do you go in an election, go into an election when you know a priori that you're going to fail? Uh, Alone. Yes. Um, I heard Gaga Amanaji say in an interview that um, you, you don't declare yourself defeated before you're going in for election. He thinks some magic can still happen. As he was saying, um, they believe that Cameroonians now badly need change, that something magic can may happen. Cameroon may go to the ballot boxes and decide otherwise. So some of them are counting on that. Some of them are counting on their personalities, the, 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 the international the fame. They, they, they have somebody like Akerimuna. You, you may not have a strong following on the ground, but there's somebody with a, a personality that may change things on, on, on that day. So, you see, people are counting on that. Cameroonians, according to what I'm saying, are fed up and want change, and something magical may just happen on that day. Now, when um, instead of facing reality, people begin to think about the magic. Mm -hmm. and yes. that people might change their opinions overnight. Is there not something wrong somewhere? Well, changing opinion of, 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 uh, 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 overnight, 
Uh, I think it is not uh, a tradition in, 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 in Cameroon. We have seen uh, previous elections uh, uh, in Cameroon. He just mentioned uh, people who, uh, the political leaders who might not go into any coalition. But we know their score. We know uh, Cameroonians know their weight. Gaga or Adamun Damjoya, they have never gone beyond 1%. So a coalition of opposition party without those two is still possible and can still make, uh, 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 make some pathways. But the problem with, I see with our opposition uh, leaders, they, they still, even though we are in a, a multi-party system, they still have that one, one party mentality is driving them because everybody appropriate, everybody is looking at self. The, the, the interest of the population is not put at the fore, because if they put the interest of the population, the people will forego their political might or their political weight. Me, my reading is that a party like the, the, the leading opposition party, the SDF, that has a, a strong uh, 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 following in the Northwest and the, and the Southwest and the West, because of the Anglo-Clone crisis, voter apathy might be high. So I see a coalition of Another stronger person like uh, M M M MRC mm. leading the way, it will it will make it will, I think it will motivate the the, 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 the opposition to go to, to, to go stronger. Okay. Now, when you say what you say, and we look at what the laws say, um, do you say that it's late to begin to talk about the coalition at this point in time, given that what would have happened? Exactly, Joe. Any, any coalition of opposition political parties is belated. First, we should rather be talking about a coalition of the opposition parties that have been retained for the election. Okay. We have opposition political parties that coalesce already with the ruling party. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, I have a problem with this issue. You mean of it's the coalition. question of terminology? It's a question of terminology. But now does the law permit the candidates to come together even at this point of the process? Well, what you have to understand is that at the moment, all those political parties have given their information to ELECAM to start preparing their ballot papers mm -hmm. and their manifestos. Yes. Mm -hmm. Now, those papers will be available on that day. And if they are coalescing today, if they are coalition, the coalition is coming today, I, what I see is rather a support of a candidate, the opposition political parties that have been retained, calling on their militants to vote for a, a candidate. Mm -hmm. That would not, to me, be strict or sense of a coalition, which we should have seen rather before the declaration of candidacy by the candidates. That's my position. I okay. think. To but, me, but, but, the but the law still permits the candidates at this point in time to desist or to step down and educate their followers to vote for this or that candidate, right? Yes, uh, nothing stops them from, from doing that. But what you must know is that the 30 million deposited, you need, uh, sorry, the, the, uh, the 30 million and the caution. Mm -hmm. you know, the advance that is going to be given to you, not a question, the advance that is going to be given to the political parties for campaigns. Mm -hmm. Half of it is given, and half is to be given after the election. Mm -hmm. And you need to have a 5% vote for you to take the, the other part of the money. So the stakes are very, very high at this moment for a serious coalition to take place. Okay. Now, uh, I, let me follow up on this point you've just said. If you were to follow the same reasoning, it means, let me first of all uh, try to educate our public. Um, if you uh, decide not to run at this point and ask your followers to vote for candidate A or candidate B, will you be given the campaign money? No. Or not? I, I, I think if you have made an open declaration and you are not going to be campaigned, because what you need to know is that the law says that you must effectively campaign. No, I mean, if you are campaigning, that's what, campaigning I'm saying. For what I'm saying is that you will not be given the money for one reason. To me, the law has not specifically stated it, but the law has said the candidates should campaign effectively. Okay. And so if you are campaigning effectively in the name of your political party, the money will be given to you. That's why I say the candidates will campaign in the name of their political parties, but 
on the polling day, maybe the if call on their militants to vote the candidate they have chosen that has the better position to win the election. That's why I said we shouldn't be talking about the coalition of opposition political parties. That, that's not the right terminology to okay. me. What we should be talking about is maybe a coalition of the parties that have been retained for the election. Okay. Yes, because okay. It's as I a question said, of it is there. belated mm -hmm. to me. Any mm -hmm. coalition is belated. Okay. Uh, which, in other words, mm -hmm. uh, you will be giving your money to campaign. Yes. You can rally uh, support, but at the uh, last, uh, on the last day, you say, "Vote for my friend who stands a better chance of winning than myself." Exactly. And there is a problem. Jim. Yes. We have a communication problem in our country. How uh, does your information? calling on voting the other uh, candidate at the, towards you know, the last day, get right to the grassroots militants. The, the issue is that like we don't know the country which we are when it comes to reaching the grassroots and the militants. Okay. So we needed, I think, that a, a better coalition of the opposition parties to unseat the incumbent should have taken place some months or even a year behind to give enough time for penetration of this opposition to the grassroots. Okay. Uh, yes, um, yeah, I, I, I want to disagree a little bit with, uh, yeah. with uh, my brother over there. You, you know, um, the term NS. Uh, Barista NSO, thank you. Uh, the term coalition uh, doesn't really have a particular context which it can it can be defined with regards to the current situation in this country. Uh, to 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 form a coalition with someone means that you just agree. You agree that this thing should be done this way. And uh, when we look at the current situation, nobody could imagine that someone like Jean de Dieu Momo, who ran for presidential election in 2011 and who has been very, very critical of the system and speaking for the anglophone crisis could join the CPDM uh, some few days ago, you know. So nobody understood the way that the CPDM was going to actually create its own coalition. Because we knew that uh, the CPDM has a lot of mushroom parties around that they used to be able to distract Cameroonians when, it time, when it's time for vote. Uh, but now we already understand, we were also waiting to see the last uh, trump card of the CPDM, uh, we, which we have seen for the last uh, past weeks. We see how uh, those uh, uh, mushroom parties uh, join the CPDM. And those are indications that the CPDM does not have any strength anymore to stand on its own. So that said, we have people on ground opposition parties that we would not like to call their names here who are ready and who are working with us on the ground and who have been doing a lot of groundwork and we must understand that amongst all those political parties some of them have their fief you know they have their areas of concentration so if you even if you give the information 24 hours to the voting period you are concentrating on your fief and indeed it is in that fief that the votes will be coming to be able to join the other votes of those who, which we are counting on. So that, I just want to clarify that uh, cloud that he was trying to create around this concept. Then number two, we must understand that um, uh, th there are talks going on among those eight uh, uh, other uh, political uh, uh, leaders, I think, I think candidates who are, who are running. Mm -hmm. There are discussions going on and we are, we are very, very confident that even if this election is called tomorrow, CPDM has no chances to be able to win this election. I want to, to emphasize that the way that the regime is handling this problem of this election and the crisis which is happening in this country, they handle it with a lot of, you know, a lot of uh, negligence. But you don't understand the intensity and the gravity of the problems and the things that Cameroonians are going through and what Cameroonians think about the regime and about the CPDM. And this election okay. is going to be one of the elections that Cameroon has ever organized. Even if they organize the election tomorrow, I want to say that the opposition will win this election. Okay. Um, mm -hmm. you, you sound very confident. We would see, uh, maybe after the election, I will invite you to come here. <laughs> there is no problem. For us to celebrate? Or for you will be meeting me at it today. Okay. <laughs> yes. okay. Yes. yes. I would, uh, just a, a, a follow-up of what uh, the, 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 lawyer, the barrister said here. You know, any credible coalition now, meaningful coalition, is a coalition of those who have been retained. Yes, of course. I, I read from the press review there that as you have seen that they have the, the coalition, the ten, they already have 10 parties uh, behind them. But I think, like he said, the, the, if there is any negotiation 
that has to go on. It should be between those. And that is what will move Cameroonians to, to vote. That's right. S sincerely, if, if, the, if, if Cameroonians know that change might come because of these interests of the population, because that is what that, such a coalition will mean, that they have put the interests of the population first before their personal interests. Uh, you will see me, uh, the miracle that he is talking about. The change will come. And he was talking about communication uh, 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 shortfalls. But campaign has not even officially started. I think this is a, a good time for them to make their militants know what is going on so that they get set for, for the D-Day. The way you speak, it sounds like no coalition, no victory for them. Of course. Of course. That is clear. That's very, very certain. No coalition, no victory. It, 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 it's very, very difficult to imagine a single candidate on sitting Paul Bear from, from the Unity Party. It's, um, I'm not a prophet but of, doom. of doom, but I don't see it that a single candidate on sitting Paul Bear from, from me to the right now, whether by fraudulent or transparent election, it, it will be very, very difficult. Okay. I, I want to add uh, to what he said, uh, that um, you people are talking about coalition. I, I have just been mentioning here that there is a lot of talking going on. There is already coalition. Around Akere Muna, there are more than 10 parties. No, you, that, you, you said uh, the, that is... No, the, we are talking of those who have been retained. That is what I am saying. We are saying meaningful, one and the same thing. Meaningful coalition. You don't know what is happening among those eight people. You don't know. So anything you say here, you will be misjudging what is going on the ground. And I am not in position to be able to declare or to make any, any stance at this point in time. But I want to encourage Cameroon, I encourage every one of you on this uh, panel right now, that you should be confident about the change that we all want in this country. And you should be committed to that change because this time, this no. election is going to you be are different not from play, every uh, other election. <laughs> <laughs> You're not yet to be campaigning. He's not campaigning. I'm just trying to encourage <laughs> yeah, yeah. everybody who is listening to you us. Know, you because know, we are talking about politics be, and we're yes. talking about the candidacy and coalition. Uh, uh, I am saying that we should be able to understand that the desire for Cameroonians to want change is so high that in, two, in 1992, and okay. that is what I'm now, saying. Let me ask you a question. Yes. Uh, when the CPDM uh, had its own coalition of uh, parties that came around a certain platform to join them, the, they made it public. G20. G20, they made it public. Why are you hiding yours? No, as for us, we made public. It's just that you guys of the of the CRTV, you don't go for information. You want information to come meet you. But why can't you say it even where you are sitting? You say no, you no, want the, to keep it secret. The, why are you keeping it secret? The point is, I said there are more than 10 parties that are already around the candidate of Akeremuna. If, if, if we keep it secret, will the other private newspapers and private uh, audiovisual media... I am telling you that there are more than 10 parties. They, so you should go down and find out who are those 10 parties who are around Akeremuna. Okay, yes. it sounds <laughs> like those are parties that... <laughs> That, that, that moving no, suitcases. because we know the system under which we operate, okay, and so, we know so, how so you they know are capable say of going around and bribing the conscience <laughs> of people. So we will keep them secret as much as we can, and we want to give this regime a surprise on the 7th of October. Okay, that sounds interesting. <laughs> uh, <but laughs> all the same, um, if you were to look at the political chase board as it is now, I won't begin with him, who would you say can possibly... Uh, form a coalition with who and why? Uh, Joe, I must say that the, the eight uh, opposition political parties that have been retained, uh, I want to say that um, all of them appear to be very serious political parties. But the most pro prominent to me of them, we have about four of them, uh, SDF, Oshua Osi, uh, Akeremuna, uh, Professor Maurice Kamto, and Kabara Libi, uh, and maybe Msech Matumba. Uh, I think those are the candidates. And so, all of them are interesting. They have following. It, it has to do now with the decision of uh, uh, the candidates to bring one of them. I think that, um, but if we set on the three, Akere, Kamto, and uh, Osi, they can if they come out one a candidate from the three uh, that that, will, that can spring a surprise uh, yes yes i want to I, I, wa I want to think same i want to think same, same same with him but i will put my i will put my 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 judgment with, on two candidates oc and uh, uh, um, uh, uh, mlc the president of yeah, yeah, maurice Camto. maurice Camto, uh, because these these are parties that have done a lot of groundwork these are parties that have long. Akere has an image 
as a barrister and so on. But when it has to, comes to do with grassroots politics, uh, the weight is not there. So this, w these two, I think they they are still in that balance. You, 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 you may be surprised. You may be surprised. <laughs> yes. Kanga, you may be surprised. Yes, um, <laughs> I hold the same opinion, virtually the same opinion like them. Um, the serious candidates to me, um, Professor Maurice Kamtu and the SDF, it is true Joshua Osi as an individual, as a candidate, may not have the aura that Fundi had in those days. But uh, I think he will rely so much on the on the, the strength of his party he, uh, from that he could uh, spring a surprise uh, professor maurice Kanto uh, to i think has uh, uh, quite a good following and uh, he has been quite prominent on the uh, political uh, space of late and i think he too may spring a surprise but where the difference where the difference will be made in this election is in the grand north because these opposition political parties to my understanding do not have a mastery of the Grand North, and I think that is where the difference will be made. That is where the, the game changer will take place. And when you look at it, the CPDM is being supported by the big parties, big in quote, from the Grand North, the UNDP, ANDP, MDR. Uh, it, it, it gives the CPDM uh, 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 an added, another advantage in the Grand North, which to me, these opposition parties have not yet had. So, for them to win this election, they should work in the Grand North. If the most of our parties are principally ethno um, tri mm -hmm. tribal base, mm -hmm. won't you give uh, Garga Haman Aji's ADD the uh, benefit of the doubt? Y yes, in, as the, in the northern regions of, of Cameroon, given that he is the only one who is daring from that part of the country. I, yes, I was going to come to Gaga Hamanaji. Um, one thing you will realize with, the, with these candidates is that uh, what you see is that I am a candidate, I am a candidate. They hardly tell you what they intend to do, what their manifesto is. You just I'm a candidate, I'm a candidate. I've had time to listen to Gaga Hamanaji, and I want to be honest to tell you that he is one of the rare candidates from whom I've had clear information, clear knowledge of what he will do if he is voted president of this country. To me, he has a very good political manifesto, but unfortunately, he is, to me, is not strong on the, on, on the on ground. ground. Yes, he is, uh, um, only intellectuals can easily understand him, but on the ground, I don't have the impression that the common man is understanding what Gaga Amanaji wants to do uh, for, for, for this country. Okay, Prince? Yeah, I, I will continue to say that uh, there are lots of surprises that surrounds this uh, uh, election of 2018. And um, who, are, who are those who can possibly form a coalition and why? The coalition is being formed already. And I think that um, we, we are talking. We are talking with uh, Kamto, talking with Cabral Libi, talking with uh, Serge Matumba, talking with every uh, of those uh, eight other candidates that have been retained. So a lot of talking is going on, and uh, we, we hope to arrive uh, to a consensus. Uh, one, one interesting thing which we learned from um, some of those candidates was that before even uh, the elections were announced, they had been talking, uh, there was some talking going on, but that up to this moment, talking is still going on, which means that it's difficult to agree on a certain platform. Why is that so? Well, you know, uh, decision making is not, an, is not always an easy thing. You know, people have the right to their opinions, and you must try to be able to make sure that they shift from their grounds where they hold uh, strongly. And that is what, um, uh, that's what negotiation is all about. So we, we believe that some have already, uh, you know, expressed or demonstrated a lot of uh, cooperation and uh, the possibility for, for them to, to shift their grounds. And uh, so we are working towards that. And I think that... Um, um, we stand a better chance to be able to uh, to create that euphoria in uh, among Cameroonians uh, towards uh, that day of election. Uh, mm -hmm. you, you, you know, um, uh, it's said that in politics they are not permanent friends; they are permanent interests. And you just cited the, the, uh, the case of uh, Mr. Momo, Barista Momo, who who uh, a couple of uh, years back was mm -hmm. months even uh, yeah. months yeah. was an ardent uh, <laughs> critic of, of of the system, but now he finds. Common ground with the with, CPDM. With the CPDM, mm -hmm. don't you see that uh, it's uh, a question of interest rather than 
position. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it, it, it's true that there are certain, um, you know, there are certain slogans that people use in, in <laughs> politics in order to be able to justify their stance and all of that. But it, it, honestly, in, ma in managing people, you must not create enemies. You know, you must not make the society to become so tense like what we have right now in this country. People are so tense because of the bad management of this, of, of the regime uh, towards the, the, uh, uh, the country. Um, and I think that uh, some people make decisions not necessarily because uh, they want to create um, lasting impact. They make decisions because of their personal interest at that point in time. But at this point in time, Cameroonians are very, very desperate. So the question that we ask in this our coalition we are making is that are we going to, to, to serve the people or we are going to serve ourselves? And if we can be able to answer that question, then we can be able to understand that people like Jean de Dieu Momo are people who have not really understood what politics is all about. No, but you are talking about somebody who has not joined you. <laughs> which, which, which Excuse me. We are talking about people who can possibly come to under the umbrella which you have. That is what I'm saying. Umbrella and and, and I am saying that we stand a bit because we are asking our, the question, are we there to serve ourselves or we are there to serve the people? And if we can answer the question that we are there to be able to serve the people, then we can be able to draw up policies that clearly show to the people that we are there to serve them. So who, and who are those who can possibly come under that umbrella which you have, you have put up uh, the, the structure from the eight? Maurice Camto can come. Uh, Cabral Libby can come, uh, Serge Matumba can come, you know, all of these eight people, even Gaga, Gaga is a nice person. He, he, he understands. Is, you cannot go, but they can, can come. come. No, no, excuse me, we are forming a coalition, you are asking about a coalition, and we yes. are forming a coalition, mm -hmm. and everybody should be able to find himself available in that coalition. It's not a matter of calling somebody, I'm not sitting in my house, and calling people to come to my house. We are forming a platform, and that platform is a, is a public space, and in that public space, we ask Cameroonians to be able to look in that public space, and we are calling on those leaders to be able to come on that public space okay. so that we can serve the public. Okay, uh, I'll be coming back shortly. Let's welcome Elvis Teke uh, with what people were react, uh, have been reacting on. Yeah, we have so many reactions, particularly with regards to the issue of an opposition coalition. Mm -hmm. Let's begin with uh, Robert Bajek, who said concerning the coalition within the different leaders, it's simply not possible. Each of them wants to be the penalty kicker and not only the one who uh, suffered the fault. And uh, Jingwa Phillips says electoral law in Cameroon is not good coalition without a second round voting will not have uh, anything to do with the CBDM. Jingwa Phillips also continued that uh, we have suffered, we have self-interest in Cameroon than general interest, which is the problem with the opposition. The Domien Yufonui says the constitution should look the state's uh, in order to uh, consider to in the, no, that the coalition should be encouraged, taking into consideration the presidential candidates of the leading opposition party, the SDF. And uh, Cho Tata, the incumbent, has made his, pen, his party truly and well organized in all constituencies in the nation, and the other opposition parties are earnestly not going to make a difference if there is no coalition. And uh, Mary Kilachin said the coalition with the opposition is good for the opposition, but I think that they can make it through. Some just automatically want to be the head of state instead of respecting their positions of the tail. And Khan Pen says, Hi Joe, coalition may be feasible should the opposition do some sort of cake sharing amongst themselves in retrospect of the aftermath of a possible election victory. And one chair, Cindy, if they are all put, if they all put aside their personal interest and think of the interest of Cameroonians, a coalition is feasible. She gives the example of Yaya Jame in his country, who was overthrown by an opposition coalition in West Africa, and the Paco, PDP in Nigeria. Yeah, and Paco Paxson, a coalition in Cameroon, has never been a feasible option due to the overzealous approach of the actors. And we conclude with Kwa Akongingwa, who says the rule of the law needs to be encouraged and administrative leniency or sympathy in Cameroon needs to be discouraged. The Constitutional Council is to be praised for showing a good example. I endorse all the verdicts given after the hearings and as to coalition of the opposition, it's late to talk about coalition because the need to, it needed to be done some time ago. And that's how we got it. On thank you very much. Thank Many you very much. Writing, yes. Yes. Thank continue. you. Just one word. Who should hold the opposition umbrella? 
Maybe. Unfortunately, we don't have a system like that in China where the person who wants to aspire to be a president has shown his proof right down there at the grassroots or in the provinces or the region, having ruled the people who should have known from their, you know, from their performances to be able to judge them. For now, it will be difficult for me to judge who can really hold the umbrella hold the for others to come under. Yes, I think Joshua also should hold that umbrella. I mean, he has an interesting, he's starting uh, uh, an interesting economic program uh, that is already discussion in some of the beer parlors. For example, raising the minimum basic uh, salary at 160. Okay. If you go to most beer parlors, you hear people say, on a name of the salary, they meet on Vosa. Okay. Well, I cannot say exactly who should hold the the, 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 the umbrella, but I think there are people who want to begin their political careers from the presidency. No, uh, they should uh, grow from the ranks and file. Let this thing be handled by somebody who's experienced. And I want to end by saying that all of what we are saying will be rubbish if people at the end of the day don't go to withdraw their voters' cards and effectively vote. Because one person, one person who, who owns a voters' card and who votes is more than 10,000 people who attend a political rally without voters' cards. Exactly. Uh, Prince? It is obvious that uh, people have a, a wrong impression about uh, many things, but the truth is that um, Donald Trump left his business uh, career and became the president of the United States. And I think that Akarimuna has done a lot of things in this country for the favor of this country, and the, president, the current president knows about it. And he has the stamina, moral stamina, academic stamina, and uh, a professional experience to be able to run this country and lead us to uh, a place where we can be able to say that I am a Cameroonian. The context America okay. and Cameroon are two different places. Okay, yeah, politics is politics everywhere. Uh, <laughs> gentlemen, for coming to the program this midday, we're looking forward to being with you again same time next week when we'll be on with another in the series and quite an interesting discussion, but it's always what we have on Press R. Thank you and stay with CRTV if you can. Good day.